Hi, good evening, everybody. And uh, welcome to Moray House for this very special evening, an evening of nostalgia. Looking at the works of Gottfried Chen, I know you're in for a very entertaining time. And for those of you, um, <clears throat> you take it easy. That's what our good friend, the well-known, uh, the famous Guyanese cook shop fly would have started most of his, uh, it would be the introduction and the closing really to most of his emails, his columns and his sessions. So we salute Winfield Godfrey Chen and uh, I think he would be pleased to have an audience the size of which he's never had before at most of his sessions here. He, he, would, he would, like so many of my friends, including Reds, they would come with these great ideas and try to bring the Guyanese on board and lo and behold, when push come to shove, as he would say. But he was never faced by it. Uh, Joe and Ian and the others will tell you that he would carry on as if nothing had happened. And you would have to stay the distance with him sometimes, two hours, because he never attempted to cut it short. But that was the cook shop fly. And um, so he would have been thrilled with the audience. He would have been tickled pink that he would have been afforded an evening like this at Moray House. But I think it's the right thing, because here at Moray House, so many great things were created and thought of, but not only that, were brought to fruition. And lots of great things that are meant tribute to David, like, I guess, New World, Stafford News, the Cam Street Avenue, um, the rehab of the Theatre Guild, so many things. So maybe this is another thing that Moray House would take on board and keep alive, because it's worth doing so. Godfrey Chen and his very famous works. And it's fitting, too, that here to bid you welcome would be one of the renowned gang of eight that frequented Moray House on so many evenings. Please welcome the resilient and the evergreen Dr. Ian MacDonald. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a huge pleasure to be here. And before before I start, I, I would like to I would like to do one very important thing, and that is to congratulate most warmly Moray House for organizing yet another uh, very valuable event. I think that um, in a relatively short time, in fact a very short time, Moray House has had a great success. They, uh, the number of times people tell me, lots of people tell me, oh, that's something Moray House should be doing and will be doing, um, I find astonishing. It is very, very much part of the cultural scene now in a very quick time. And I, I think all the people involved with Moray House should be, feel very pleased about this. And I'd like to congratulate the Board of Directors, <coughs> the Board of Directors, uh, the staff, uh, the administrator, and everybody involved with the Moray House. I know that uh, Doreen and Isabel and Brendan must be very pleased at the success, and I know David himself will have loved an event like this and would have loved what has been achieved by Moray House. Another round of applause, please, for what they're doing. And now to Godfrey, great Godfrey Chin. And I say that advisedly because it seems to me that as the years go by, uh, his marvelous life work is beginning to become more and more well-known and more and more, in retrospect, important. And I'm so glad that Moray House has had the thought to do an evening like this. And I hope in future uh, we can begin to do something about extending Godfrey's great legacy. In the last conversation I had with Godfrey, amidst a multitude of evocations that continually cascaded out of his extraordinary memory, he told me about bird whistling, competitions in donkey cart racing in Guyana long ago, and described to me the 101 manifestations 
of that condition of bewitched infatuation in a man or woman called Taipei. I urged him to do extended nostalgias on all these subjects, and he promised he would get around to it. He never did, and I'm still saddened at the thought of how much the nation lost in the passing of that absolutely unique chronicler of Guyana's rich social history. His book, Nostalgias, which I hope all of you have read, and if you haven't, you should get hold of a copy and read it. His book, Nostalgias, was a classic of its kind, and is a classic. Here are six points about Godfrey's nostalgias which make them truly compelling and valuable. First, they are wonderfully entertaining. Here we see the art of living in all its glorious variety thrown onto Godfrey's own special canvas. Secondly, they are an extraordinary feat of memory and creative recall. Very few people have the gift of photographic memory, which delves deeply into the past, and even fewer have the wonderful gift of making recollection come so vibrantly alive. And thirdly, they are remarkable in their rich profusion. The subject is as long as life itself in all its variety, and the detail is astonishing. The never-ending profusion of exact memories crowding Godfrey's gallery again and again is astonishing and never-ending. Anyone could suggest a subject to Godfrey, any subject, sweeties, or seawall, or sugar estates, or dominoes, or the old Durban racetrack, or anything you like, anything you like. And hardly pausing, Godfrey could produce a nostalgia which will make you laugh and wonder and say, yes, that is how it was. The nostalgias, fourthly, marvelously enhance and enrich our lives by bringing to vivid life events, people, ways of enjoying ourselves, sports, festivities, food, frolic, and a thousand and one things which had faded from our memories and our lives and now live again as fresh as ever. Fifthly, very important, Godfrey's style was all his very own and was immediately recognizable and perfectly suited to its purpose. Godfrey had a wonderful knack of joyous storytelling, which was robust, carefree, optimistic, racy, and memorably written in lovely, easy sentences of great impact. And finally, and this is very important for the history of Diana, finally, Godfrey's nostalgias make a truly remarkable even unique contribution to our social, cultural, sporting, and general history. This is valuable, priceless material for all historians. I think what a treasure these nostalgias are, not only to ordinary readers, but also will be to historians and scholars decades and more into the future. His nostalgias delight us now and in future. They will provide a wonderful fund of knowledge those who research and look into how we once lived. At his death, and I saw Godfrey perhaps a day before he died, at his death Godfrey was working on scores of projects, some just more of his famous nostalgias, some major historical investigations, all very precious. Not long before he died, I spoke to him about a project close to my own heart, the compilation of the histories of all sports in Guyana. All of them, as well as the great clubs, deserve to have their stories written. I was going to suggest to the Ministry of Sport, the Sports Council, and the Guyana Olympics Association that they commit themselves to such a project and to, for this purpose, recruit Godfrey, <coughs> that human dynamo, that one-man resource team, to assist. Godfrey himself was hugely enthusiastic and said he would do it like a shot. He already had a lot of this stuff in his archives and in his God-given unique brain, especially in the case of hockey and squash, and he was ready to accept the challenge. I was full of hope, but without Godfrey's energy and drive and ideas 
and wonderful, contagious love for what he was doing, nothing will happen to that important cause. And sadly, nothing will happen to scores of other important causes which had been a fire in his mind. If only Godfrey had just, say, five years more to go on with his work, think what a cornucopia of additional nostalgias, memories, collected documentation, exhibitions of his gradually accumulating thousands of pictures, and the unforgettable historical insights we would have received into our communal possession. What we might have had is an unsurpassed national archive of our previously lost yesteryears. I'll just end by saying this. Godfrey was an indispensable resource. His legacy is a priceless national asset. I think we should try in some way to amplify that legacy. I know for sure that there was enough material for at least another book of nostalgias, perhaps two or three more nostalgias. I think an effort should be made to organize this material and publish it, that at the very least. Thank you very much.